On April 19th, 2024, the Bitcoin network completed its much-anticipated halving event, which cuts in half the number of newly minted Bitcoins awarded to miners. One of the biggest implications is that all else equal, Bitcoin miners have their revenue effectively cut in half overnight. In a previous video, we took a deep dive into the Bitcoin mining industry, and explained that substantially all of the publicly traded Bitcoin miners are losing money. The structure of the industry is such that this is not likely to change. Given that the miners were already losing money to begin with, the halving should logically be the final nail in the coffin. At least, that's what many people thought. Surprisingly, immediately after the Bitcoin halving, the Bitcoin mining industry received a massive windfall, with daily revenue surging to $100 million, almost double what it had been previously. This is despite the block rewards being cut in half. In this video, we'll take another look at the Bitcoin mining industry, figure out what causes unexpected windfall, and finally, what we can expect for the industry going forward. Crypto is always a controversial topic, with a lot of people having strong opinions. Thanks to today's video sponsor Kalshi, you can now put real money behind your opinions. Kalshi is the first legal and regulated marketplace in the US, where you can bet on real world events. It's basically like the New York Stock Exchange, but instead of investing in stocks, you invest in things you know and care about. There are hundreds of markets covering events like whether TikTok will be banned, to Taylor Swift's billboard performance. Since Bitcoin is the topic of today's video, let's look at their Bitcoin markets. Let's say hypothetically that you think the price of Bitcoin will fall to below $30,000 by the end of the year. Currently, the market is pricing in a 15% chance of this happening. You can buy a yes contract for about 15 cents. If Bitcoin indeed ends the year below $30,000, you'll get a $1 payout. You can also take the other side of the trade and buy a no contract for $0.85, cents, also getting a $1 payout if you're right. The odds are determined by market forces, and your percentage gain is inversely related to the consensus odds. Kalshi is a great place to hedge your positions in the stock market, or trade in areas that you're particularly knowledgeable about. So make sure to check them out by clicking the link in the description below. The first 500 traders will get a free $20 credit. And now back to the video. To understand what's going on with the Bitcoin mining industry, we first need to understand the basics of how Bitcoin works. Let's say one person wants to send a Bitcoin to another person. Three pieces of information are needed. First, the input, which is the address of the person who's sending the Bitcoin. The second is the output, which is the address of the person who is receiving the coin. Finally, you need the digital signature, which confirms the sender actually owns the Bitcoin he or she is trying to send. The digital signature comes from the transaction by which the sender originally received the Bitcoin. The data is put into a so-called block. The input and output data are put into the base block, which has a maximum capacity of 1 megabyte. The digital signature is put into the larger extended block, which has a maximum capacity of 3 megabytes. Up until 2017, there was only the base block. By consensus, the Bitcoin miners implemented a soft fork called Segregated Witness or SegWit. SegWit added the extended block, which allows the Bitcoin network to process more transactions per block. While this explanation might sound overly technical, the extended block will become very important later on in the video. So how do the Bitcoin miners fit into this? Anybody who wants to have their transaction verified on the blockchain needs to place a bid in the so-called mempool. Each Bitcoin trader attaches a bid with how much transaction fees they're willing to pay. The transaction fees are paid in Bitcoin. The Bitcoin miners choose the transaction fees offering the highest fees until the block is full. If your bid is not chosen, you'll need to wait until the next block and hope nobody outbids you. People who want their transactions to be processed quickly will offer high transaction fees. Once the block is full, all the miners in the world compete to solve it. Solving the block essentially entails guessing quadrillions of random numbers until you match the correct one. This is an oversimplification, but the basic idea is the miners are trying to guess a random number as quickly as possible. Once a miner guesses the right number, all the transactions in the block are verified. The blockchain then proceeds to the next block. The miner that completed the block received two forms of compensation. First is the block reward. The block reward is made from newly minted Bitcoin and is a fixed amount for each block. Additionally, the miner receives all the transaction fees paid by the traders whose transactions were included in that block. Usually, block rewards make up the vast majority of miners' compensation. Marathon Digital is a publicly traded Bitcoin miner and is one of the few to disclose its transaction fee revenue. There are some gaps in the disclosures, but typically transaction fees only represent a couple percent of their revenue. During times of network congestion, transaction fees can skyrocket and make up to around 10% of revenue. All else equal, if more Bitcoin miners enter the market, blocks will be solved faster. If you have 1,000 people guessing random numbers, they'll almost certainly guess the correct number faster than if there were only 10 people. The Bitcoin protocol is set up such that each block occurs once every 10 minutes on average. 
If the blocks start being solved faster than this, the Bitcoin protocol automatically adjusts by making the random number harder to guess and vice versa. This is called the difficulty rate. As the Bitcoin price has risen over recent years, many new miners have entered the industry. The market for Bitcoin mining rigs is highly competitive. The manufacturers come out with more efficient mining rigs on a near annual basis. Bitcoin miners buy newer, more efficient rigs to increase the computing power they supply to the network. As the difficulty rate increases, older mining rigs become obsolete, as they don't generate enough Bitcoin to cover their electricity costs. Once this happens, they are junked for scrap metal. The estimated useful life of a Bitcoin mining rig is only 3-4 to four years. The need to periodically upgrade mining rigs is a massive expense for Bitcoin miners. Ultimately, all the miners in the world are competing for a fixed supply of block rewards. As more miners enter the market, each miner receives a smaller piece of the pie. To make matters even worse for the miners, the supply of new Bitcoins decelerates over time. If you look at a long-term chart of the number of Bitcoins in circulation, it's a concave function. In the beginning, it was increasing very fast, but now it's increasing very slowly. This is due to the halving events which take place once every four years. This cuts the block rewards in half. So all the miners in the world are competing for slices of an ever-shrinking pie. Almost all of the publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies are losing money. The three largest Bitcoin miners in the US by market cap are Marathon Digital, CleanSpark, and Riot Platforms. In Q4 of 2023, Marathon's cost was almost $44,000 per Bitcoin generated. This includes the direct cost of operating the mining rigs, corporate overhead, and depreciation. Remember that mining rigs need to be replaced every 3-4 to four years, so depreciation is a huge expense. The average price of Bitcoin during the quarter was $37,000. CleanSpark's total cost per Bitcoin was slightly lower at around $40,000. The average price of Bitcoin during the quarter was $36,500. The average Bitcoin price is different for Marathon and CleanSpark because it's weighted by when each Bitcoin was mined. As Bitcoin was volatile throughout the quarter, these numbers are slightly different for each company. As of the time of recording this video, the Bitcoin price is $64,000. Had they held onto their Bitcoin, they'd be in the green by now. But the point is, it costs them more to mine each Bitcoin than the price at the time. While they might get lucky if the price appreciates going forward, the core mining operations were unprofitable. Riot Platforms has multiple segments besides Bitcoin mining. They don't provide enough segment level disclosures to accurately calculate their cost to mine each Bitcoin. But in the fourth quarter, they had an adjusted operating margin of negative 99%. This is excluding the gains they recognize on their Bitcoin holdings. We are just looking at the profitability of their core operations. You might be tempted to say, look, the Bitcoin price is $64,000 now. If it costs Marathon and CleanSpark about $40,000 to mine each Bitcoin, they should be profitable now, right? But you also need to consider that the difficulty rate is almost always increasing, and increasing very quickly. As the difficulty rate increases, the cost to mine each coin also increases, because any given mining operation will generate less Bitcoin. So you can't compare old mining costs to current prices. Historically, the publicly traded Bitcoin miners have been able to sustain their losses and expand their operations by issuing billions of dollars worth of new shares. Over the past four years, Riot, CleanSpark, and Marathon Digital have increased their share counts by 9-fold, 24-fold, and 29-fold respectively. And now back to the main topic of the video. Most of the Bitcoin mining companies were already losing money before the halving. Now that their block rewards are getting cut in half, will this be the final nail in the coffin? Remember that Bitcoin miners generate Bitcoin through two sources, the block reward and the transaction fees. Typically, the vast majority, more than 90% of their revenue comes from the block rewards. This chart shows the aggregate amount of Bitcoin earned by all miners each day. The halving occurred on April 19th. On April 20th, the block reward was indeed cut in half, but the transaction fees skyrocketed. The transaction fees skyrocketed to such an extent that the miner revenue actually increased in the day after the halving. So what happened? It's all thanks to this man, Casey Rodarmer. Rodarmer is a Bitcoin enthusiast who created two new Bitcoin-related innovations over the past year and a half. You might remember the NFT craze from a few years ago. People would make low-quality digital artwork, turn it into an NFT, and sell them. Some people made an obscene amount of money by selling NFTs. A much larger number of people lost an obscene amount of money when they bought these worthless pieces of digital art. Most of the NFTs were created on the Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum allows for so-called smart contracts, which can be used to create and transact NFTs. In early 2023, Rod Armour found a way to create NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. He called them ordinals. Remember that each Bitcoin block is 3 megabytes in total. There's one megabyte base block with the addresses of the sender and receiver. 
Then there's the 3 megabyte extended block for the digital signature. While the digital signature is required, it turns out you can actually put whatever data you want into it so long as it's less than 3 megabytes. This includes JPEG, text files, and you can even put short audio files into it. In early 2023, Rod Armor published a paper telling people how to make these ordinals, and people started minting NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. People would create ordinals and sell them on a secondary market. For example, these ordinals with pictures of rock sold for as much as $26 million. To get a sense of just how dumb this is, many banks allow you to type a short message to the recipient when you make a wire transfer. Imagine that you copied a picture of a frog into this message, and then convinced someone to pay a million dollars for the receipt. That's basically what the ordinals are. Bitcoin was supposed to be a means of facilitating transactions, but people found a way to attach JPEGs onto it, thereby creating a new grift. Around May of 2023, Bitcoin ordinals garnered a lot of hype among a certain segment of the crypto community. Many people started creating new ordinals in an attempt to cash in on the hype. Typically, Bitcoin transaction fees stand at around $1 or $2 per transaction. Increased demand from ordinals pushed fees up to $30. Within a couple months, people realized that these ordinals are a useless gimmick. Their prices collapse, and there is no longer any reason to print them. By the summer, trading volume for Bitcoin ordinals decreased by 97%. Starting around November, Bitcoin prices were rising in anticipation of the spot ETF approvals. This caused a general mania in the Bitcoin community, and people started printing ordinals again. This again drove a massive spike in transaction fees. It's important to note that only a very small percentage of Bitcoin traders were ever involved with ordinals, but based on how Bitcoin transactions are processed, a small number of people could have a huge impact on transaction fees. Remember that each block could have 4 megabytes of data. Normal Bitcoin transactions have very little data. They're basically just a few lines of digits each. Because each transaction is so small, up to 2,000 transactions can fit into each block. Thus, the Bitcoin network can process about 2,000 transactions every 10 minutes. But when you add a JPEG of a frog onto a block, this can be a lot bigger. Just a few ordinals can take up the entire block. This is despite the fact that the monetary value is quite small. Most ordinals are made by transacting one Satoshi, which is the smallest transactable unit of Bitcoin. One Satoshi is one one hundred millionth of a Bitcoin. This is worth a fraction of a penny. So the value of these ordinals transactions are tiny in monetary terms, but massive in the amount of data they take up. With ordinals taking up so much of the blocks, the network became congested and fees went through the roof. Remember that the number of blocks is fixed at about 1 every 10 minutes. It doesn't matter how many miners are plugged into the network. More miners entering the industry just means there's more competition between the miners. It doesn't speed up the processes of Bitcoin transactions. Even when the ordinals craze pushed up the transaction fees above $30, traders could still make Bitcoin transactions on centralized exchanges like Coinbase at a much lower cost. So how is this possible? Centralized exchanges like Coinbase maintain internal ledgers. When you buy Bitcoin on Coinbase, you're typically buying it from another Coinbase customer. Coinbase just updates the ownership of the Bitcoin on their internal ledger. No transaction is actually made on the blockchain, so Coinbase doesn't need to pay any transaction fees to the miners. They only make on-chain transactions when they need to increase or decrease the aggregate amounts of Bitcoin they hold. This can be done with a small number of large transactions. The Bitcoin transaction fees are based on the amount of data in the transaction instructions. The monetary value of the transaction doesn't materially impact the amount of data. In some cases, it might only cost $3 to make a $1 billion Bitcoin transaction, but it might cost hundreds or even thousands of dollars to send a JPEG of a frog, even if the monetary value is less than one cent. So now we know that the spike in transaction fees in May and December of 2023 were related to Bitcoin ordinals. But what about this much bigger spike on April 20th, 2024? Transaction fees spiked to $128. And coincidentally, this happened just one day after the halving event. So what's going on? Again, it's all thanks to this guy, Casey Rodarmer. After seeing the success of his ordinals project, he decided to make a new project called Bitcoin Runes. His inspiration for the name was Ancient Nordic Runes. That's why he dressed up in a Viking Halloween costume for this podcast appearance. Bitcoin runes are similar in concept to ordinals, but while ordinals contain non-fungible digital art, runes are so-called fungible tokens. They're basically new cryptocurrencies you can create off of the Bitcoin blockchain. Rod Armor created the rune protocol, whereby people can create new coins with unique names. Each name has to be unique. So once someone makes a rune coin with a given name, nobody else can make a coin with the same name. To be clear, these rune coins are meme coins with zero utility, and that's not just my opinion. That's what Casey Rodarmer himself says. 
In a blog post, he explained that 99.9% .9 of fungible tokens are scams and memes. But since crypto traders will likely buy into scams and memes anyway, there's no harm in him creating a new one. Rod Armour timed the launch of runes to match up with the Bitcoin halving in April 2024. The runes have nothing to do with the halving. The timing was purely chosen to capitalize off the general hype relating to the halving. As soon as the rune protocol was launched, thousands of people started minting new rune coins. Because each name is unique, people rushed to grab up the most meme-worthy names before anyone else. This caused massive congestion in the Bitcoin network, and transaction fees went through the roof. So what does this mean for the miners? Historically, 90 plus percent of their revenue has come from block rewards. But even as the block reward is cut in half, could they make up the difference with transaction fees? In the long run, probably not. While they got a temporary windfall from the runes, this is almost certainly not sustainable. Bitcoin runes have zero real-world utility, even according to their own founder. So just like with ordinals, the hype will eventually exhaust itself. Gimmicks like ordinals and runes are unlikely to have a significant impact on transaction fees in the long run. As of the time of recording this video, Bitcoin transaction fees have already decreased to $28 from the post having high of $128. There's a crypto consulting firm called Luxor that developed the hash price index. This estimates the total amount of revenue a Bitcoin miner can make per hash rate per day. Hash rate is a measure of computing power. This index basically tells you how much revenue a Bitcoin miner can generate with a given amount of computing power deployed. The hash price index depends on the price of Bitcoin, the network difficulty rate, the block reward, and the aggregate transaction fees. Immediately prior to the halving, one petahash of computing power would generate $105 per day of revenue. This spiked to $182 when the Bitcoin rune coins caused transaction fees to surge. As of the time of recording this video, the rune windfall has largely subsided. The hash price index has fallen to $60. Aggregate miner revenue has indeed been cut in half as a result of the halving. The rune mania was only a temporary reprieve. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about the Bitcoin halving? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.